we're gathering together as saints, as brothers and sisters, and preparing for the second coming of Christ. We want to be there together, and we want to be there strong together. A family is torn apart by cultism and murder. Did they really believe the world was ending? Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow's extreme beliefs about the end of the world as described by their friends are now clearly part of the investigation into the deaths of Lori's children, JJ and Tylee, Lori's ex-husband, Charles, Chad's wife, Tammy, and Lori's brother, Alex Cox. This is the unbelievable true story of Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow and their murders. Has she made any statements about wanting to hurt the children? This is Charles Vallo. Charles would later be murdered by his wife's brother, Alex Cox. These are some of his last recorded moments alive. In late January 2019, Charles Vallo returned from a work trip in Houston to find his truck missing from the airport parking lot and $35,000 taken from his bank account. Worse yet, he said he couldn't get in touch with JJ and Tylee. How does she pose a threat to your children? I don't know what she's going to do with them. I don't know if she's going to flee with them. She's going to hurt them. Gilbert police showed up to their house after Charles filed a petition to get Lori involuntarily committed for a mental health evaluation. She's lost her mind. I, 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 I don't know how to say it. We're LDS. She thinks she's a resurrected being and a and a a god and remember the 144,000 she's come to Jesus is coming next year she said you're not Charles I don't know who you are what you did with Charles but I can murder you now with my powers Charles explained to the officers that Lori had changed over the last couple of months and she had people in Utah telling her how many lives she's had you're a dark spirit but she's gonna tell you okay I'm a dark spirit Officers had Charles kick in the door to his own house, but ultimately told him Lori hadn't committed a crime. Fast forward to 12 hours later, Lori and Tylee, along with a family friend, showed up to the Gilbert Police Department. So yesterday I got an argument with my husband on the phone and he was in Texas working and I found some stuff that he'd been doing, so he was really defensive. And so I took the kids, we spent the night in a hotel because I knew he was coming home. Lori told officers Charles showed up to JJ's school and stole her purse out of her car. He then used her phone to text her friends to come to the house. He's acting like that my son was in danger. I'd be worried about JJ's okay. safety. And th the officers called Charles to ask for Lori's purse back. He asked if they would serve her the order. When they brought up the mental health evaluation, Lori couldn't help but laugh. Sorry. I just think it's funny because he's trying to get over this. Right. A couple of weeks later, Charles filed for a divorce. By July, he was dead. You're going to get real interesting. Other body camera footage shows an officer talking to one of Charles's friends on the phone. That person witnessed the phone call where Lori said that she would, quote, destroy Charles. However, he said that she never made any threats towards the kids other than that Charles can have them if he wants them. In July of 2019, Charles Valla would be shot and murdered by Alex Cox. 911, where is your emergency? It's at uh, 5531 South Four Peaks. I think it's Four Peaks Lane, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, you, know, you don't know the direction? I don't know the, the, the street name, if it's a lane or court. 5531 East, though? Uh, yeah, or South? South, south Four Peaks. 5531 South Four Peaks in Chandler. Is that right? Yes. You need police yes. or paramedics? Uh, both. I'm in mean, police and an ambulance. What's the emergency there? Uh, there was a. I got in a fight with my brother in law and I shot him in self defense. About two hours after Charles Vallow was shot and killed in a Chandler home, Lori Vallow, his estranged wife, walked into the Chandler police interview room beaming with joy over Tylee's school grades. She leaned forward and sat up in the chair as the interview officially started. You can just kind of tell me kind of what happened. It sounds like some of this may have started last night or something along those lines. Right. So start where you think it makes the most sense. Okay, so 
Um, She explained to the detective that she and Charles were separated, but Charles was coming over to take JJ to school. He left his phone inside the house, and when he came back in, Lori had it and wouldn't give it back. She said that's why her brother Alex came out of his room. Charles and Alex started fighting, and Tylee, her 17-year-old daughter, came out with a bat and then went outside to be with her brother. Once Alex pulled the trigger, Lori left with the kids. When the detective left Lori's room, she grabbed a tissue and dabbed her eyes. Then she closes her eyes and nods off. Chandler police also released this video showing Lori in the drive-thru at Burger King on the way to taking JJ to school. Breakfast for dinner and dinner for breakfast. Uh -huh. Tylee, just 17 years old, was also a witness to the scuffle inside the Chandler home. While waiting for the detective in an interview room, she was fidgeting and humming, but then broke down. She told a similar story to investigators. Do you know what happened inside of the house? Has your mom kind of explained it all to you? Um, I just kind of asked her, like, because I heard a noise, mm -hmm. which I know what it was now, but it sounded like, because I knew that the basement when I was in there, it sounded like someone, like, took it and hit it really hard against the floor. Okay. Tylee told detectives she tuned out all the yelling and didn't know what the fight between her stepfather and uncle was about. This is what Lori's now dead husband, Charles, told police in Arizona about how Lori's religious beliefs had become disturbingly extreme. Her religious stuff has gone way off the deep end. She threatened me physically. She made threats about the kids. She doesn't care what happens to them. Come get them out of here. Um, we won't hear that from Sumber anyway. And I'm going to unpack with our God and always on the kids with our God anytime I want. It's just irrational stuff. Yeah. She needs some serious help. Yeah. I want her to get help. I'm worried about her. This would unfold into a series of events that would lead to more murders and unanswered questions. Several months prior, Charles Vallow expressed concern that his wife's mental health was going downhill. His wife began listening to Jad Daybell, and eventually she was on the podcast with him, where they talked about the end of the world. On the streets of Rexburg, Idaho, we start to get a clearer picture of a mysterious, loose-knit group of people who follow Chad Daybell. It sounds like a preparedness group for the end of the world, doomsday type of thing. An offshoot of the Mormon church with extreme views. We hear that ground zero is Chad Daybell's neighborhood. So that's where we are headed, looking for somebody within the group who will talk. Moments later, I'm taking a walk with a follower. She says she and Chad both communicate with spirits, that they are true members of the Mormon church, preparing for the end of the world. And she doesn't judge Chad, even if he's guilty, because we're all sinners. Chad and Lori also used a media organization to attract followers. It's called Preparing a People. It is no longer active, and the owners stated, we are innocent of any involvement in Chad and Lori's personal lives. Our relationship was mostly business. We have wondered if Chad and Lori used us for their media purposes without us knowing what was going on behind the scenes. It does feel like a big betrayal. Both Lori and Chad told friends and family that they are part of the 144,000, which is a biblical reference from the book of Revelation. On the next episode of Unsolved True Crime, we will look deeper into Chad Daybell's cult and what would turn out to be one of America's most twisted tales of murder and tragedy.